an update on the story of Damon. He's the teen who's hiding from a father he says sexually abused him and a court system that failed to protect him. Earlier this week, Damon's father told us his side of the story. Our legal analyst, Robin Sachs, met with Damon and asked him about his father's belief that Damon's been brainwashed. Are these your own words and thoughts? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is me. These are my choices. They're my beliefs. And they're the truth. Is someone controlling you? Absolutely not, no. Is someone telling you what to say? Not in the slightest. So your dad says you're not living any sort of normal life. I'm trying to get him back in a normal life. He's nowhere, nowhere close to normal right now. He's right. I'm not living a normal life. But he tries to make it sound like that isn't his fault. And it is his fault. He could give a consent form for the emancipation. He could give partial custody to my mom. He could let me live where I want. If he went into family court and said, OK, I'm OK with Damon living where he wants, and he gives me the choice of where to live, I could be living a normal life. It's completely in his power, and he hasn't. He says there's really only one way out for him, and that's emancipation, but he won't come, that you won't come out of hiding. The judge could still say, no, you have to go back with your father, and that's simply a risk I'm not willing to take. Robin Sachs joins us now to talk about this story. So that was this morning. What, nothing is clear-cut in this story. So what's your impression of Damon when you talk to him? You know, one question that didn't make the tape here that was so telling to me was when I asked him, what is success here? What is winning? What is, are you going to be happy? Let's assume that you're 18. Are you going to be done at 18? And he said, having a life is what success is. And then he also said that he really, the only way that he sees that this case really being some sort of success is if he can use it to help other kids when he's older. He did mention on Good Day LA this morning that he would like to see his dad held accountable for the crimes that he alleges that he's done, but that's not his goal. And I thought that was really interesting because I really expected him to say, I want to see him fry. I want to see him pay and suffer the consequences. I want to see justice. But really what he wants is to be free and to live life. I mean, we ended that interview and he had to dart out of that interview, get into a car, and go to some other undisclosed location. He was worried about the cameraman and the audio people knowing where he was and possibly telling. He's really a guy on the run. And, and when you see someone having to go through that length at that young age, you can't help to say someone wouldn't be doing this unless they really believed in their cause. You, you can see that he's aged well beyond his years. What is it that his father says about his mother that's so poisonous. Why is his father so against his mother? Well, this is the thing, and actually Damon brings this up, which was really interesting. Dad doesn't necessarily even say mom's directly coaching. Dad has said mom may have inadvertently coached. Mom believes that this actually happened. And Damon brings the point, how can you inadvertently coach? Either you're coaching and you're saying something that happened, or you're not coaching. So clearly, one thing for sure, Damon believes this happened. Damon's mom supported Damon in believing this has happened. And dad is kind of waffled between whether it's directly under a spell or some indirect coaching. So the person to me that isn't really making the most sense mm -hmm. is dad. All right, so speaking of his mom, we do have now his mom on record. We haven't heard from her yet. So earlier today, Gina Silva talked with Damon's mom. Damon's dad says that you have been controlling this boy since he was six and you have brainwashed him into saying that he was molested. He's been saying that for a very long time and it simply is not true. Everything about I have done with Damon, I have done in order to protect him from the abuse that he's telling me about and he's telling other people about it. So instead of interpreting it as coaching or, or brainwashing, I think that everybody should listen to Damon and assess Damon's credibility. I can't understand why, if this is all true, she can't get more help from the courts in this. Well, I mean, that's the, the frustrating thing. And she's not alone. We're looking. We've been really spending a lot of time focusing on Damon. But I can't tell you, not only have I received tons of emails right. in my personal email box, through Facebook, through Twitter, all over the place. Same with Kathleen Russell, who is the, the woman who is the executive director at the Center for Judicial Excellence. I really want to say her name because she has really been advocating for Damon on behalf of his case. She gets tons of cases and calls. I've gotten tons of calls prior to the story airing. It's, there has been a humongous pendulum switch shift. What has happened is that there was a time where women always got custody 
and, and, and disproportionately so. And I would agree with the father's rights movement in that, that without a good analysis of what's in the child's best interest, that it shouldn't be a default to the mom. Both parents, good parents, should have equal time and equal custody with kids. I believe that. But I think that as a corrective mover, maneuver, and you know in the world of sports, it's like a, a giveaway foul, it's a payback foul, that what we now... <laughs> a good way to put it. We actually see now this pendulum shift that all of a sudden now, when there is a question or when you don't have proof beyond a reasonable doubt, there's going to be now a default to believe mom is coaching and therefore dad should get the custody. And what's ended up happening is, is that the consequences are huge because what's happening is our kids are being placed back with people who have abused them and who have threatened them. And there's no way better to see the amount of power and control that this dad wants to have and that he is still fighting not recognizing that it is probably in Damon's best interest to be emancipated, to have custody to mom, or to have different options other than having him with dad. Wow. Okay, and believe me, this is in Robin's wheelhouse. She mm -hmm. knows these type of cases. If we have been following the story of Damon, that uh, teen who ran away from a father, he says, sexually abused him in a court system, he says, failed to protect him. Damon's father and brothers agreed to discuss Damon's situation. The first time they've talked publicly, they sat down with Gina Silva and our legal analyst, Robin Sachs. It's sad that it has to come to this where he's on the web saying things. His son, Damon, has been posting the allegations on the internet for a couple of years while he's been on the run. This father happens to be one that sexually abused me and then threatened to kill me. Did you molest your son? Did you touch him inappropriately? Did you have sex with him? No. God, no. Absolutely not. That's not the kind of person I am. According to Damon, you told him, I'll kill you, I'll kill your brothers, if you tell anyone. I have no idea where those came from. That was not... That was after the three years of, of being in hiding. He blames his ex-wife, Damon's mom, who took Damon and his older brothers and hid out for three years. She wants full control of Damon with it's basically me out of the picture. Um, so if, if she doesn't get her way, nobody's getting Damon. Is it your belief that he's been brainwashed by his mother? Where, where, where is he there's, coming up with all this? There's stuff? ways to say that, and yeah, I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen with all three of my sons. And, you know, it's sad because at one point my oldest two sons were afraid I was going to kill them too. Damon's 16-year-old brother gave a sworn statement he witnessed his dad abusing Damon. Now 20 and back living with his dad, he tells us he made a mistake. I really, truly didn't witness anything. I didn't witness any abuse. I didn't. Like, I, I was a kid. But police were concerned enough in 2003 that they placed the dad on the Child Abuse Central Index. He had failed to pass a police lie detector test. There's two questions that were showing deception, and they were poorly designed questions. So he paid for a second polygraph, this one administered by a private company. He passed. The second polygraph was a private polygraph, but it's fully admissible. Yes, I did pay for it. And based on that, the information, the polygraph was sent back down to the detectives in San Diego. They took me off the child abuse index list. The case then moved from criminal to family court, where he won full custody of Damon. It's been vetted in two court systems and upheld by the appellate court. Nothing happened. Damon insists he was abused repeatedly and fears for his life. He threatened to kill me if I ever talked about the abuse. I'm talking about it a lot now. Um, and he has every reason to want to shut me up. Given the level of Damon's fear, our legal analyst, Robin Sachs, asked the dad in our meeting, why not change tactics? Wouldn't you just say at this point, it's in my child's best interest for me to stand back and not be part of his life? It's not that easy a question to answer. Um, it may seem like for most people viewing this, that it, it's a no-brainer, but it isn't. It, you have to look at where this kid would go, because I know that under the guidance of his mother, he would not have a normal life. What do you want to say to Damon? What's your message for him? 
I want him to be completely free of the control he's under now. He is living his life as a fugitive. And he's ha he walked away from a wonderful life. He says, tell dad to give up and go to jail. He said that my dad is a danger to the community and he needs to be prosecuted. That's what hurts so much. It really does. Gina Silva, Fox 11 News. All right, uh, hearing this is Damon. Robin Sachs is with Damon this morning. She is with him. We're going to go to them live and they're going to talk. We're going to do this in the next hour, so stay with us for that.